Hey Libra, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. Take what works, leave what doesn't. If I don't catch a wavelength or storyline on this reading, check your other major placements. But also, you can check your other major placements even if I do catch your wavelength or storyline here. So um, I'm working with a new uh, Oracle deck. So we're going to do Urban Crow Oracle and um, the Oracle that I do not know, Animal Spirit, something like that. Uh, and then we'll move on to more traditional tarot spread with the Muse Tarot. All right, what do we have for Libra? Okay, coming fortnight. These first little bits of summer, official. Uh, what do they call that, official summer? Oh, I like. I like. <laughs> well, huh. Bobcat spirit, life is a mystery. Slinking around here. Not quite sure where this bobcat is. Bobcats are actually one of my favorite animals. Their giant paws are so exciting. So life is a mystery. Okay, so something mysterious, uh, maybe not seeing things, um, not seeing some uh, things not being obvious. Things uh, being a little bit mysterious, a little bit hidden, um, could be right next to you, could be far from you, something. Um, life is a mystery. I love that. And accepting that and moving with that energy. Um, I also, oh my gosh, ant spirit, time to collaborate. So um, these ants all working together, um, each one having a different role here, uh, moving things into place collaboration and then look what else we got teamwork uh these these crows have teamed up to uh remove an intruder so this is like defensive teamwork this is working our our team works together to uh, protect our territory to protect our young to protect but we also work together to build so i feel like both of these are about building and maybe reaching out for help um tapping into your team uh, if, if something comes up here, if something, um, so some sort of collaborative effort, if you need some help, uh, and it looks like you will need your team, you'll need to call in some teamwork. So either to build something or to protect your territory or just working together. So I love that we got both of those ant spirit time to collaborate teamwork. That's pretty awesome. And then we also have pig spirit. Use your mind wisely, which is really funny because I got this one while I was, um, just sort of a, a shuffling here. This one popped out in the pre-shuffle. So uh, definitely yours. use your mind wisely. What are you going to focus on? And also, oh, using your mind um, to um, understand yourself, understand your situation, using it wisely, not frittering away our mind energy and our mind space on um on uh, things that aren't useful to us or or things that you know no not ruminating not um you know using using that space up there wisely uh not throwing that energy and that time that those thought processes away on things that either ultimately don't matter or rehashing the past or um, so making sure that we're focusing our mind on the things that are most useful to us right now. Uh, so using your mind wisely and anomaly, something very unusual about to happen. I like this card cause I like the unusual. I like the routine broken up. I like, uh, things that are interesting and, and unusual. And, um, so just something coming in here, uh, that's, this is our albino, um, crow here so something very unusual it's not gonna go under the radar here it's definitely gonna catch your attention there's a sense of also uh, being surrounded by messages from the divine um, or messages of some some kind uh, there's also a sense of something coming to fruition uh, and it, it is going to be a little bit strange so maybe this is where your teamwork the collaboration efforts come in here um, as far as like uh, working with something that is an anomaly and that is outside your norm um, 
And so maybe needing to tap into some expertise from other people so that you can uh, deal with this thing that's outside your norm, right? We have all these habits. We have all these ways that we deal with the way our life is set up. We've set it up in certain ways. Uh, so when something from the outside comes in and, and topsy-turvies that, uh, then we, um, you know, tap into your resources, tap into other people. This anomaly comes in, this unusual event comes in, uh, and make sure you're tapping into your resources. Um, hitting up your team for, um, for help in, in dealing with uh, something that's outside your comfort zone. All right. This is your past, your present, oopsie, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, to-do list, and possible outcome. In your recent past, we have the High Priestess. Things have been hidden from you. Uh, the Divine has kept things hidden from you. Of course, um, that's basically life. There's always a lot that we don't know, we don't understand. So this has been like working sort of in the dark with some sort of intuitive hit, some sort of intuitive understanding of something. So you have partial amounts of information, but the whole path hasn't been revealed to you for a reason. Um, there's a sense of perhaps someone doing this intentionally, withholding information from you intentionally because they're not sure you're going to be able to, how you would deal with it. This could be you withholding information you know, testing the waters. How do you deal with this bit? How do you deal with this bit? How do you deal with this bit? So testing the waters of, of um, exposure or, uh, or um, yeah, testing out uh, something. It's coming in as a test to me as someone um, or some sort of either you or someone else doling out information um, as and then watching the response, testing the ground, trying to figure out um, here's this bit of information. How are you responding to that? Okay. Um, so that's what I'm getting with the high priestess here. It's a very spiritual card. Typically, typical reading would be a spiritual card. Um, uh, what's seen, what's unseen, what's known, what's not known life revealing some things to you, but not the whole thing. Um, in this way though, today I'm getting a little bit of a testing vibe here of, um, of, of something, things being revealed bit by bit and the reaction being closely monitored and closely watched. I also love that we have bobcat spirit here with life is a mystery. I was getting that energy here of sort of a bobcat in the woods. Um, sometimes you can see him, sometimes you can't. You maybe know that he's been there, but you rarely ever see the bobcat. Very hard to, to actually see in action, uh, but you can see evidence that it's been there. Um, so the same with this high priestess, I'm getting a little bit of the mysteries of life, uh, not being able to fully see through something, fully see and understand something. Something's been a bit of a mystery to you uh, in the past. You can see evidence of it, but you haven't been able to maybe see the source of, of what's been going on or really get to the source of it. But you've seen reflections of it and, and uh, you know, the paw prints in the snow. I guess I'm seeing this bobcat in snow. Um, and you can see the impressions it's making. You can see the a little bit of a path, a little bit of a trail, but sight of the bobcat. Mm, bobcat's pretty mysterious. So I'm getting the same vibe from this high priestess here. Uh, in your current situation, we have seven of inspiration, trying to make space for a vision, trying to make space for um, for your your own growth, for your own power, for your own intuition, for some project. This could be, you know, scheduling issues coming up here as far as, you know, I, this is what I want to do, but everything's starting to crowd out around that and, and other things are needing my attention. So this is a real determination here to hold your own, to hold space for something. Uh, this could be a passion project or something like that where day-to-day -day responsibilities, financial responsibilities, scheduling responsibilities, responsibilities to our loved ones start to crowd in, but you are pushing, you're holding this space, you're standing your ground, you're saying, no, what I think, what I feel, what I want to prioritize, I am going to do that. So there's a sense in seven of inspiration of prioritization. I'm just realizing that I think a lot of the sevens have some sort of prioritizing the vision, prioritizing the dream aspect to them. 
um, what are you going to prioritize? So uh, the seven here, because, and then that makes sense too, because it's halfway through the Kabbalah tree and we're like part way through. Do we want to continue committing to this journey or um, are we going to, or other things going to sort of truncate the journey that we're on or the, the decisions that we've made and the thing that we've tried to, that we've, we've made an intention towards. So this is sort of a moment maybe not a moment, maybe a week, maybe, maybe just a time period where you're struggling to make room for something, to schedule something, to figure out how you're, not how, but just there's an inspiration here. You're sticking with it, uh, but you may need to disrupt the normal flow of something. And that's a little bit of this anomaly to disruption to the normal flow. So you may need to disrupt the normal flow of things, your normal schedule to make room for something that you're prioritizing that really calls to you and inspires you. Uh, your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, this makes sense now too. Uh, two of materials, juggling a lot. You're worried that there might be too much on your plate. You're worried that you're not going to be able to do the things that maybe uh, fulfill commitments uh, this is, she's struggling here. She's struggling to juggle things. This is also negotiation, but there's a struggle involved. There's a, um, there's something in, in sort of your schedule. Again, I'm seeing some kind of um, prioritization issue. Uh, and so you're not quite sure you can handle everything on your plate. You might be worried that uh, you're not going to be able, you're, you're struggling to hold space for something and you might be concerned that you might not be able to handle everything that's on your plate right now. Plus hold, hold that, hold the opening uh, for, for a, a sacred vision to come in or to, to maintain that sacred vision uh, with everything, all the day-to-day -day stuff uh, crowding in. So two materials, um, you're, you're worried about, uh, it, it's very day-to-day, -day. it's very, um, could be money, could be managing money, could be um, some kind of negotiation. You're concerned that you can't handle it all. You've got a lot on your plate, you're juggling a lot. Each thing needs its own individual attention. Uh, you may feel like a little bit of a pinball as you like, and then I touch this and now I have to go over here and now I go over here and now I go over here. So there's a, there's a could be some fears of not being able to handle and manage um, all of the priorities and the things that need to be sort of equally prioritized um, in their turn. Love this. This is what's at issue or the situation, the devil reverse coming out of some sort of obsession, some sort of entrapment, some something that lured you in that seemed so beautiful, so wonderful, that promised change. It was so promising. It was so, so wonderful. And you maybe uh, sacrificed a lot for the, for something. Um, and then, uh, and now you're being released from some sort of strings, some sort of obligation. Um, you're being released from something, uh, that has pulled at you and has held you trapped. So this is a release from entrapment. Uh, this could be mental um, as far as like, uh, or leaving addictions behind, leaving obsessions behind, being able to let go of that um, and, and the internal aspect of something, being able to um, accept and release something, right? Uh, releasing, uh, really being released from something. Um, this may be decisions you've made. You maybe have made a priority of this, but being able to be released from some kind of obsession or some kind of obligation, you're being released from an obligation, a contract. You may be ending a contract, right? Because contracts are something that we want. We wanted, we wanted this mortgage. We wanted this uh, contract. Um, but in the end, we're not really all that interested in in continuing on with something that we committed to and kind of has held us held us bound to it. Those contracts are very important to society as a whole, but often as individuals, it can hamper our um, our uh, ability to move freely in in line with our own instincts and intuition. So, um, but this devil in reverse, this is being released from something. Um, and maybe you didn't know why you were trapped or how you got trapped. There, I see so much determination in this seven of inspiration. I want to say it's seven of perspiration. She's working hard. She's working very hard 
you were working very hard to to keep to sort of keep the faith or keep um prioritize something and it's disruptive it's a disruptive to the flow and i feel like that's a little bit of this release from something these strings here you're um they're being moved right these meridians or, or things are being moved out of your way um and so you're being released from some kind of contract or some kind of um, mental habit or or um, neuroses or something that uh, you're being released from um, in your environment we have four of materials uh, there's a clingy vibe going on uh, something there, there might be some time out there might be some obsession going on in your environment someone else may be obsessed in your environment uh, there could be something here that's that's the beginning of something and it really has somebody there, there's just a clingy vibe here in your environment there's a clingy vibe um and it's clinging to not much it's clinging to not the most and not you know it's four of materials these are four roses it's not a whole bouquet of roses it's four roses and there can be a sense of clinging to something and that's great for a time but there's so much more there's so much more so your environment has um, some kind of situation, a, a clingy vibe or a obsessive vibe in your environment. Um, there's something going on here that's that's creating this energy. Your um, four materials in the environment. I don't. That's a that's a new one. <laughs> that's not one I deal with regularly. But I think that's always interesting when they show up like that. But there's a sense of not being enough and hoarding. This could be someone around you is in a in an obsessive hoarding energy, which is great, right? We do that with honeymoons, with laying in periods after a baby, with um, with uh, you know, finals week or whatever. We we there's these periods of time where right, the schoolwork isn't the thing, isn't the thing. It's the four. It, the schoolwork is the four, the only the four roses, right? The thing is what you want after that, or the thing is what what is is later. So. So there's an obsession period, um, and that can be fine, and that can be healthy, a period of obsession with something, um, but then it needs to be come out of, and, and uh, there's, there's a whole much more to the journey here than just this. So there might be some sort of obsessive clinginess um, to something that's just this, um, and, and there's a bit much bigger picture, uh, but it sits under the priestess. So th there is like just a partial here, a partial... Uh, acquisition going on in your environment. I want to say a partial understanding, a partial acquisition uh, that is very absorbing and it will absorb your attention, but it's only part of it. It's only part of the whole story. So, um, so, so make sure that, so, you know, just realizing that this is, this is just part of a much bigger picture. Um, so getting obsessed with something for a time, a, an intense study period may be required of you, some time out from, right, oh, yeah, because we're making this time out for something, and this is that time out to, to really um, be absorbed by something and to really uh, be involved very strongly in something. There's more to your life, there's more going on, but this is like a period of time where you're studying intensely, there's finals, there's a new baby you're connecting with there's you know a new partner you're connecting with so there's an intensity here a focus here um, for a period of time so your life may be and then in the midst of this focusing on something else for a while you're want, you might be worried about dropping some other balls here while you're focused on this one aspect for a bit it's demanding your focus right now and you are you are you've actively created this situation you you want to focus on this so there's a period of focus going on here. Uh, your, oh my gosh, your uh, to-do list, uh, what you're supposed to interact with or what you're looking for is three of emotions. Uh, and I like it. What surprised me about it was this um, time to collaborate and teamwork. Okay, I, you know, it's not three of materials or three of pentacles, but it's three of emotions, three of cups. Uh, this is um, joining together, um, enjoying the company of friends, uh, deep emotional sharing of joys and concerns. Um, there, this is connecting to others emotionally. 
Um, and so it may be part of this teamwork thing too, of connecting with others. Um, but this is more emotional than these other ones. So, but, so that could be part of it is that this could be an emotional process and it's important for you to, um, to, to reach out to others. So this is something you're doing, something you're engaging with. So, um, so reaching out to other people, uh, building friendships, creating friendships, or just reaching out to the friends you already have. Um, so part of this, and maybe that's going to be part of like managing everything or um, it sits right underneath this seven of inspiration. So it could be making space for your friends or asking for emotional support as you make space for something else or even release yourself of something. So maybe um, something's taken up a lot of your time and space. And this is just saying, yeah, you do need to reach out to your people. OK, something's been very absorbing. Um, you've had a lot on your plate. This is all dying down a bit, and now it's time for you to reach out to some other people. A uh, possible outcome here, the energy that could be coming towards this night of materials, this is very slow moving energy. <laughs> so this is, this is planning something. So maybe you're getting together with some friends to plan something out, uh, making some plans. Uh, the night of materials, this is communication, this is movement. Um, this is boldness, but there's only, this is a bold plan. This is a bold, the night of materials actually doesn't move very fast. There's a sense of needing to see the pattern, needing to see how things unfold, needing to get a, a good understanding of, um, the lay of the land before charging forward. There's some bravery and some courage here, but before charging forward, we're getting an idea of the lay of the land. So it's like, to, to me, the night of materials is very much planning. There's not a lot of movement, but there's something that wants to be moved toward. There's there's details being figured out um, and communicated about. Uh, this isn't the actual movement, but this is the preparation for the movement so that we can move in, in some kind of certainty. Nine of Materials doesn't really move, but Nine of Materials does lay the groundwork for movement. He's like the scout that goes out and is like looking at the battlefield and trying to see where best advantages could be and and um, where they want other people situated. Um, so we're not really charging into battle, but we are sort of in a battle, or we're not charging into an activity, but we are planning out and organizing thoughts and, and, uh, and making plans um, for something. So I like this too, because it's pig spirit, use your mind, night of um, materials. Materials is very physical, but this is the, the mind part. This is the mental part of the physical, um, of the physical manifestation. So we're gonna be planning something uh, using our minds wisely, not spinning out, not um, procrastinating. Um, uh, I mean, actually procrastination is really useful because you can procrastinate, get a lot done while you're procrastinating something else. And then something else comes along and you procrastinate that and get all this stuff done. So maybe that's a little bit of this two materials I'm seeing here is um, is juggling your procrastination so that everything eventually gets done. Uh, but you might be worried about um, all that you have on your plate. So nine of materials, though, um, planning. So maybe getting together with some friends, sharing some ideas and starting to plan some future movement here. So. All right, Libra, I hope that that was helpful for you. Uh, thanks for your likes, subscribes, and comments, and I'll see you guys in a bit.